What is up, everybody? Welcome to episode number 643 of the Smart Cat Moment Smack Talk podcast, Hot Tags of the Week, and the main event of the week, Wrestling with the Past. We're going to be going over the WWE Hall of Fame class of 2024 and breaking down the way that we normally break down the, uh, the Hall of Fame class each year. We're going to get into the Hot Tags a little bit after that combo edition this time around because... There's actually not super duper too much to talk about on either end. So I figured we'd just uh, do one recording this week. And thank you for joining us as always. Who are we? If you don't know, I'm Tony Mango, joined as always by Robert E. Valise. Tony didn't call us wrestling fans. I don't know if I'm the wrestling fan. Who do I do? <laughs> That's right. I didn't say that at the beginning. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> and Cal Wiggins. Hello there. Yeah, what's up, wrestling fans? There you go. We scratch that. It's a little <sighs> bit. <laughs> After fucking, I don't know how many episodes of this show you think I would have done that. And I just threw out the F word in the first minute. So there goes my monetization, I guess. I don't know. Uh, it's not like I'm getting monetized anyway. If you want to help us out on the monetary side of things, though, of course, keep in mind all the things on this marketplace we don't really talk about. Redbubble and Public are where you can pick up merchandise. Patreon.com slash moment. The uh, YouTube channel membership. Just click on that join button. Same thing as the Patreon. Get the dark cast tier and the uh, pick poison tier and all that good stuff. If you just want to toss a little spare change our way, the thanks button's on there on YouTube too as well. And of course, there are non-monetary ways that you can help us out. Double check you are subscribed. Ring that notification bell for those email alerts that are going to be going crazy next week because we have so many things on the uh, schedule for next week. That's another one of the reasons why I figured we could be a little low-key on this one. You guys are going to get jam-packed with podcasts over uh, the course of that first week of April. And uh, keep in mind as well, hit the like button on this video. Helps us out quite a bit. Also, join the Discord server that we have over at that link that you can see up on screen or the sidebar link on smartcatmama.com. Keep in mind as well, we've got the Funko Pop contest going on right now. The Road to WrestleMania giveaway that is sponsored by fun.com. Three Rocky Maivia Funko Pops are on the line here. You have so many different ways that you can enter this contest and so many different times that you can enter because it's basically however many times you want. You can retweet things that I have up on there. You can have, obviously, if you are subscribed to the YouTube channel and stuff, then you can already enter. You don't have to resubscribe. All you have to do is let it be known that you are subscribed on there and it should go through the gleam.io thing that's on there. And, uh, you know, hey, it's a Rocky My Funko Pop. Why wouldn't you want it? Also vote on the Smart Madness tournament that's happening right now. We can talk about that for a brief moment here. The uh, tournament this time around is who is the WrestleMania main eventer, where you take the most uh, times people have main evented WrestleMania, throw them all together. And we are on round two right now, which is currently John Cena against The Rock. And Roman Reigns against The Undertaker. John Cena beat Hulk Hogan. Rock beat Triple H. Roman Reigns beat Brock Lesnar. And Undertaker beat Shawn Michaels. So what would you guys think is probably going to be the end of this? Because I was thinking that this realistically should be Hulk Hogan and Roman Reigns. And Hogan's already out. I've had to explain a couple times this week. People don't care about Hulk Hogan. Like, they just... Don't bias is too much now. Well, I think that it should have maybe been Hogan over Cena. People still probably consider John Cena to be the guy. And in that way, I'm going to guess it's probably Cena Roman. Um, Cena Rock, Roman Taker. Uh, yeah, because... If they put Taker over Roman, you're just lying to yourself. I guess you don't really care about the math of it all. <laughs> like, we know Steiner does. You think it's going to be Cena Roman too, Callum? Or you think it's going to be uh, maybe The Rock gets in there just because he's more of a focal point at the moment? Uh, it, I, I guess it's probably going to be Cena Roman. At the moment, Cena's beating Rock. Pretty handedly, and Taker and uh, Taker and Undertaker, Taker and Roman are uh, tied. Of course, they are because people think Undertaker because Undertaker equals, Undertaker streak is, equals mania equals yeah. 
Even though so many of those matches are like the most random throwaway matches on the shows. And like maybe they're like the third on the card or yep. you know, second to last instead of the main event and all. Well, if you have your opinions one way or another and you want to vote while you can, I switch those polls up on, uh, I think it's like Mondays. I, uh, I've been doing them. So Out of 27 look. matches, Taker only had one five times, and that's if you count the AJ Styles thing. So he's not really a WrestleMania main eventer. He's just WrestleMania. Well, you figure... If you've got 39 WrestleManias up until this point, and you you main evented five times, it's still <laughs> it's a good chunk of those. But yeah, I mean, to me, it's it would have been Hogan and Reigns uh, as like the guy who's at the top and the guy who's going to overtake the guy at the top over uh, next weekend. But then again, that's uh, why there's a poll for everybody else that may or may not disagree uh, to chime in with their thoughts. So. Also, keep in mind, we also want to know what you have to say about the hot tag. So if you want to chime in with your thoughts about that and uh, leave your comments below and everything, that's great. That's greatly appreciated. We always uh, like to have this discussion continuing and all for whatever it is that you want to talk about on here. And, you know, we got these different topics that we're going to get into. But the thing to talk about first is that wrestling with the past section where the Hall of Fame class this year, I thought that we were going to add another one or two people to here, and it seems like it's just the group of uh, six people that have already been announced, and they haven't announced the inductees, which seems to be a thing that they've been doing over... How many years has it been since we've gotten an announcement of an inductee ahead of time? Like, four? About three, you know, but, like, I think that's okay. It's a nice surprise in some cases. In some cases, they're not really announcing it because, like, we don't even even know who's inducting Thunderbolt. You know, maybe they have Punk come out and duck him in and the place goes nuts. You know? It's just an extra pop. I'm thinking more than ever that they might not even have inductees. They're, they have inductees. That's That will happen. I don't know. I... It, I could see them just doing the video package thing. No, they I, I, at the very least, I could see them doing that for a few of these. Like Thunderbolt Patterson, I could see getting just a video package and being like, "We're thrilled to induct him." Nope, and he asked some radio host to do it. Oh, is that like? That's uh, why they don't tell you the inductees. Huh. In some cases, they just don't matter. That's not somebody that's involved in wrestling that we should know. I hadn't seen anything about any inductees this time around. I, you know, last time I searched for it, it was like the only information that I had seen hall of fame related that wasn't already put out there from just the, here's the list of the people was the, uh, thing that Paul Heyman had said where he's like, oh, I'm just going to wing it. Which is like, yeah, it's very Paul Heyman. And he's one of the few people that I would trust could actually just wing a hall of fame speech and probably kill it. You know, I'm looking forward to his, uh, his speech can't really say that i'm necessarily looking forward to the rest of it this is probably the weakest hall of fame class that i've ever seen that's just not true (laughs) there's been weaker classes what would you go with for a weaker one the one that the one that was headlined by dibiase comes to mind because i remember thinking surely they'll announce somebody higher than dibiase and dibiase will be the you know secondary inductee so that's ted biasi antonio noki wendy richter mad dog vashan gorgeous george Stu hart and bob Uecker. you know honestly i that's still a pretty stacked lineup but it does kind of fall in line with this year's where it's okay you, you've got you include hey, in there like wendy richter's inducted by roddy piper mad dog vashan's by pat patterson Stu hearts by bret hart ted biasi jr is uh and brett is uh inducting Teddy Biasi, you got Dick Ebersol for Bob Uecker. I I'd still go over that class. <laughs> that kind of rules actually. <laughs> now that I'm older, I guess. <laughs> that kind of, that kind of rules. Calvin, do you remember what we had for the Hall of Lame worst class? Was that in in there? Uh the Teddy Biasi one? I I mean I I couldn't I couldn't tell you which one it was. I can't remember. 
nothing that stood out uh, from your memory of like that you had picked uh, a certain class or something. I don't remember. No, what honestly, I, I can't remember. I can't remember any of them anymore. <laughs> any of the classes you mean? I'm actually. I'm. Looking yeah, no. Right yeah, now. like I couldn't tell. I, pro I probably couldn't tell you most wrestlers that are in the Hall of Fame. I couldn't tell you what year they were inducted. So. Oh, I mean, neither can I. I mean, even the ones that I remember being like a really good class. You know, if it's like oh, it's 2006, 2008, 2012, like that, it's all of it blends together enough, and you know, there's a good chunk of people that are in the Hall of Fame that I still don't even know who they are, let alone anything about what their career has been and all. You go old enough, and I couldn't tell you the first thing about you know, um, well, like no, Thunderball Patterson this year, like I just I couldn't tell you anything about him whatsoever. Never heard the name that I can recall let alone can I recall facts about him afterward. But when you get into like the legacy award names, like sailor art, Thomas, don't think I've ever heard the name. Sure that they did a lot of stuff. They always mention that for reasons, you know, that are way beyond my ears. But when I'm just like Googling this real quick and looking at this other group, I'm like, man, even last year's we had, Ray Mysterio, the great Muda, Stacy Keebler, Andy Kaufman, and Tim White. That's a solid enough class. Like, and Ray wasn't the person that they wanted to even go with, but they still uh, ended up having that work out pretty well. And this year, it just kind of seems like they might as well have just done Paul Heyman on his own. I'm going to, I would dare say that this year's class is better than last year's. Really? Yeah. Why not? Well, would you who out of uh, last year's class do you think is worse than, say, uh, Thunderbolt Patterson or U.S. Express? I apologize to the diva fans out there, but what did Stacy Keebler really do? She had legs and she knew how to use them, and boy, oh boy, was that always fun. Not denying that, but like, really? Andy Kaufman's great, but it kind of felt like a little bit too late. Um, and Muda just literally came out, spit some mist in the air, and said, "See ya." You know, but <laughs> like <laughs> this will be better. Bull Makana has some WWE stuff she can call back on. Rotunda and Wyndham are is about Wyndham Rotunda, and we're gonna get a lot of Bray Wyatt love. And quite frankly, Rotunda deserves to be in there. I'm you still surprised that they didn't. Like, I know that they've got this uh, documentary, but. Well, it just seems uh, like an odd choice to do the documentary and not induct him and induct his dad and, you know, Barry Windham, and then to be like, but it's too soon. Well, you can do everything but that. Why is it too soon? Yeah. I'm sure I they have their say, reasons. Like, they, they clearly, they think it's too soon for a particular reason. Maybe it's, like, too hard for them to actually, like... Yeah, and then uh, close the chapter or something. But it's just for my personal opinion. You know, it too. Like he said, they they reassessed it. They thought it was too soon. He's gonna go in, but maybe this is better for all of us because it's less stressful. And like the U.S. Express, look, they weren't. They're not like a legendary team on the the level of the Dudleys or the Road Warriors, but. First year WrestleMania, and this is WrestleMania 40. And due to the unfortunate tragedy, what better time to induct this particular team? Now, part of this wrestling with the past that we've done in the past uh, is uh, to throw in the whole one more match concept. And this year it is a year unlike any other where most of the people it's kind of hard to say a one more match. We've got a boxer who's not a wrestler. We've got a person that the three of us don't really know anything about. We've got a tag team. That's not really legendary in a way that we can just be like, man, you know, the Dudley boys, for instance, like let's pair them up with so many different people. But Nakano, I think we all have the same answer that would be pretty obvious. And then Paul Heyman's a manager. So it's, it's hard to kind of do that, but as far as the U.S. Express is concerned, if somehow, you know, the the magical way that this one more match concept would work out, we're in battle world, you know, we have secret wars going on or something to throw out for those uh, Marvel nerds like myself. 
if you had a one more match concept for us express is there anybody that comes to your mind just right out of the gate i would have to actually sit and think about it off the top of my head i think ftr comes to mind but they're not in wwe but i guess it doesn't really matter yeah, it's a magical concept, you know. They they, know? they they come over, they have one more match, and it's not in WWE, it's in ah, AW. I would there you go. <laughs> you know, they would be able to give them a good match. I think it'd be a lot of fun. That's and probably the one I would think of immediately. Would you lean more towards FTR or would you lean more towards Young Bucks or a completely different other option, Cal? Well, I'd just say whatever well, team is good right now. So it's basically you, you pick one from FTR, the Young Bucks, the Usos, or the New Day, or something like that. Literally, just pick whatever is the best team right now. That would be the team that I'd have faced the US Express. A lot of times, I, I, think... I, I haven't watched I haven't watched enough US Express to know what their style is or how to complement them well enough. Well, yeah, you I mean, watched I'm not Barry Windham, right? Like, not really. Yeah, well, that, I guess that falls on me. I have, and that's why I, I picked FDR. I just, I just think that, you know, they're from that kind of NWA territory, like the early, very, very early days of WCW. So I think that, you know, FTR would make sense, but is that too much of, like, complementing styles? Are they too similar to have a good match for each other? Do you go with the Young Bucks, which is a bit more of a clash? Does that make it a bit more interesting? But fundamentally, you just put probably put a good team one of the better teams that's working today against them and it's probably going to be fine. Yeah, I mean, I'm like more familiar with Mike Rotunda as IRS and Barry Windham is somebody that I've, you know, I've seen his matches here and there. I know his name, obviously, but like he's not a guy that I can recall a whole lot. If we couldn't do, for instance, a superstar scores Barry Windham, I would be like, I have to do way too much research for it. But a lot of people that are out there, at least in the current landscape of tag teams, I don't think would necessarily mesh well with them. And some other ones, maybe they would, and I just wouldn't necessarily care. Like, if you were to be like, oh, man, the US Express is coming back for one more match, and they're going to go up against Indu Share, I'd be like, well, okay, you whatever. USA. <laughs> you <laughs> that would work for the USA thing, yeah. <laughs> and, like, they, I don't think, would have, like, a particularly great match against, like, A Town Down Under or against the Judgment Day or, you know, any of those kind of things. It's, I think you'd have to go somebody more, like, a little bit on the old school side or somebody that can mesh with the old school. So, maybe Alpha Academy could work. Maybe... Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa could just get a really good match out of them or something, but there's nothing that screams out to me because I'm just not all that invested in the US Express. It's not a team that I grew up loving and, you know, uh, sure, they could have a good match with New Catch Republic, but you wouldn't uh, hear me USA. being like, that's the, uh, yeah, that's another just USA one. It wouldn't be the headliner in my mind. Um oh. If you if I had to think of like a WWE team and think of a story for it, well, they're fighting Tony D'Angelo's family because the mob is getting out on their taxes. <laughs> and then he just it becomes Money Inc. Uh, without <laughs> Ted DiBiase and Mike Rotunda with the Barry Windham instead. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's a it's a team from an older generation that doesn't translate to me as well. So I'm sure that there's a lot of people that are really, really happy that this team is being inducted. And I mean, I good for them. Like, I, you know, it's not a negative for me, uh, but it's just, you click on like their Wikipedia page and the pictures in black and white that already is kind of a, you know, a, a signal that I'm not going to have as much of a connection to it. And, when you go to like the 80s uh, era and it's not the big, big headlining types, a lot of it just gets lost in the shuffle for me. I'm curious what their song is going to end up being because I don't remember them ever having a song other than just being the original source of Real American. Born in the USA. You think they're going to license that? No. <laughs> they're probably just going to have to Real American. Oh, I think that they can't. If they come out to Real American, people are going to think Hogan's coming out. 
it's way too. No, they're gonna go Hogan. fuck you, Hogan. We had it first. That's and that'll be a whole bit. I'll be like, ah, that's so funny. Fuck Hulk Hogan, yay! <laughs> I could see maybe them just giving them some whack ass generic music, like like just... a generic riff of Born in the USA. Maybe not even necessarily that. I don't know if they would spend the time and effort, and money to you know orchestrate that. They might just like look up American patriotic you know synonyms on like the production companies that they have like the the um what are they called the not the albums like the hollywood theme kind of thing where it's just like the generic production music that any movie production uses but hey this is american enough maybe something like that like a royalty free thing or they just have agreements with like some of these other uh studios that have you know you could go on like um I mean, God knows how many of them that they've used over the years when it comes to different production music. Like, uh, let me look up some of the information about that. Like, Warner Chapel production music is like one that they definitely had associations with before, and Two Steps from Hell or something. You just pay a little bit of like MJF's theme, you know? Like, that's a production track. That's not something that was created specifically for him. I think that they're just going to come out to that, but, um, I'm assuming that Bo Dallas is the one that inducts them. They still haven't said anything about that either, right? Uh, no, but that would be the proper assumption. Unless they have somebody in the past that they want to bring in that's like, you know, a former, you know, an older kind of friend or something. But um, yeah, I'm trying to look it up now to see if there's any other information about the actual list of inductees, but no, I'm not seeing anything about there. Uh, I don't have any go to like memories of us express either and for that matter again i i honestly have absolutely nothing to say about thunderbolt patterson does anybody have anything to say about thunderbolt one more match or a memory thing or anything good on promos inspired dusty i couldn't tell you one more match but it's cool that somebody like him is going in Yeah, but nothing. So <laughs> we were talking before about who could potentially induct him, and Cody's name was tossed out there. But um, going to be a radio host named Scott. Hold on one second here. Uh, Scott Spears, a journalist and radio personality from Marion, Ohio. Good old Scott Spears. You know, I had on the. I was in a, an Uber uh, the other day, or a, a tech, uh, technically a taxi. And there was an advertisement where it was like, hey, this is Scott Stanford, whatever. And I was just like, oh, look at that, Scott Stanford. Um, yeah, you know, Thunderbolt Patterson. He's kind of just uh, one of those names in this. But we do have a little bit more that we could talk about when it comes to Muhammad Ali. Now, I am not a big boxing fan, but everybody knows Muhammad Ali. Of course, he is not a wrestler. So to do one more match, it is kind of changing up the concept a little bit, but that's a little fun too. If we could have one Muhammad Ali like match, all the fantasy elements continue. Anybody's uh, your go to pick? I mean, a lot for this one. I'd like to see him. It would have been fun to watch him take on somebody like Dusty or Flair or Hogan or get another match with Anoki that actually has a finish. Or, you know, maybe take on somebody in the modern age, like a like a modern, you know, stalwart of Japanese wrestling, like Okada, Tanahashi. But I think if I'm just being real, my answer was immediately Mike Tyson. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. He's also in the Hall of Fame, and damn it, we should have gotten to, that's That's the ultimate dream match from that realm. One more match, Muhammad Ali, and it's a boxing fight against. <laughs> I mean, the pay per views would be, you know, skyrocketing, that's for sure. Any of those kind of people, though, if you add him against, like, uh, Floyd Mayweather or, like. Uh... You wouldn't do it against Floyd Mayweather. Because <laughs> they're, like, three white classes in between each other. Yeah. So, you, so that wouldn't be much of a spectacle. 
I mean, I'd watch it. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, there's MMA people. Like, you know, do you have Muhammad Ali up against, like, a, a Brock Lesnar? Should I see what happens there? The greatest uh, of all time against the greatest of all time kind of a gimmick? That could be interesting. You know, it'd be fun to put him in there with CM Punk. See what happens? <laughs> What do you think, think Cal? I think uh, CM Punk isn't winning that one. Well, it, it, it says like any sort of fantasy match with um, Muhammad Ali would be either with Mike Tyson or Lennox Lewis would probably be the other choice I'd go with. You are English, um, and also he was he was as good, if not better, at fire than Mike Tyson. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, Tyson would have been a lot of fun to see get into a wrestling ring. Oh, I'd, I'd say you only do it as a boxing match. I, don't, I have that zero interest in seeing Muhammad Ali wrestle, having seen the match, the quote-unquote match that he had with Antonio Inoki. So. How, how do you think modern MMA rules change that? Well, they don't, they don't because uh, Ali couldn't do any MMA. So. Well, that would have just put it more in the favor of Inoki, wouldn't it? Um. Well, well yeah, but... As, as I say, I saw that match, and Anoki did have like grappling ability, and the match sucked. So I, oh, I he decided to lay down was... his fucking back and kick his leg over and over. Yeah, <laughs> and I presume that I presume that a lot of people would do the same thing as well. Or like it, again, it depends because if Ali, you'd have to have basically book the idea that they're going. To, there's got to be a winner out of the two of them, and Ali's not going to want to lose because it makes. Let's say it's like old school champion. Heavyweight champion of the world boxer, Muhammad Ali, he's not going to lose to a wrestler. So the wrestler has to lay down or get knocked out by Ali. So you're probably not going to let, you're pro- Lesnar's probably not going to do that. You think that's what was said to Inoki, which is why he then put the entire match down on his back? <laughs> well, yeah, of course. Because uh, essentially that was, it was meant to be like a spectacle match. But uh, if Inoki's meant to be, as he was at that point in time, like the god of, Japanese pro wrestling, then he's not going to want to lose any shine by being knocked out by an American boxer. I hear you. I hear what you're saying. So we're all in agreement. Muhammad Ali, Nick Gage, deathmatch. <laughs> or if you want to have him just actually knock somebody out, put him in the ring with Logan Paul. <laughs> I did think about Logan because of all the stuff that Jake is doing. But then I thought, you know who would play with him? The Rock. I mean, if you want to do like the biggest name in boxing against the biggest name in pro wrestling, you do have options of like Hogan and Cena and Stone Cold and whatever. But The Rock would be the biggest showman over that. The Rock would play with them, and then The Rock would get his ass kicked. I could see that working. I th- know some people would probably just go straight to, "Hey, he's the guy right now, so why not Roman?" But. I don't think that that would make a whole lot of sense. I don't think that'd be as entertaining either as a lot of the other people that are more like showy, like uh, as much as I prefer watching Roman in the ring, I'd rather see Muhammad Ali knock out Ric Flair than Roman Reigns, for instance, because at least Flair would be like flopping around like crazy and stuff. I don't have a whole lot of like memories about Muhammad Ali either, though. Like as far as like the memory side of this, I'm not a big boxing fan, so that's something that's lost on me as well. Of course, he is just like an iconic name, so it's not like I don't know some of his career and all. But uh, you know, boxing's kind of a tangential thing to me. It's like every couple of years I see like one fight, and usually for the most part, I watch that on like YouTube, and it's you know. A, couple seconds worth of that and i mean the rocky movies are good <laughs> if you take them with a grain of salt but i can't really get into like you know specifics about that stuff it's not my uh it's not my thing now bonacano would we all just go Asuka? i don't think we go right there i think there's a lot of great talents there's you know, obviously, if you want to stick to the Joshi side of things, there is EO. There's Kyrie, who probably had the best match of the three of those particular names. But I also think Onokano Rhea Ripley would be great. You know, I think 
Bull Nakano to have a badass match with Bianca Belair. I think, you know, there's so many names. There, there's so many stardom names. There's a lot of people Bull Nakano could get in there with. Yeah, I mean, I'd say Garden of Oscar is a bit limiting and pretty, um, you know, stereotypical to go with just a route of, hey, what is other Japanese woman wrestler on the roster? Let's just go with Asuka. Well, I can um, see I the it- allusions between the two of them, and, you know, you have, like, the face paint stuff, and Asuka is one of the best in-ring talents that they have, so... I'm going to say it wouldn't be a bad match, but I'd say, like, it's just, um, it's just narrowing the focus too much. I'd say that um, EO out of the three of them would have the best match with her because EO's a high flying type and Bull Nakano would just throw her around for a while and EO could respond with more high flying stuff. Be more of like the um, Manami Toyota type against uh, Nakano instead. Um, but yeah, as I say, you can pretty much take anyone from WWE or AEW's top order of women's wrestlers or stardom or Impact and put her against Bull Nakano and that'd be pretty it'll be a good match i'd say out of all of them the one that i think would be just most interesting would be belair i'd say just because i think that she's proven that she can have great matches with pretty much anybody in any style so i think that putting them against each other would be good i would think with the rear ripley option that, that can make a lot of sense but that if you actually put them in the ring together that it would be too much of like a debate about who's going to be the powerhouse and Sometimes, you know, when you have, like, uh, the same styles, they can work really, really well together. Like, two high flyers just, like, flip around like crazy. Or two big brutes just beat the tar out of each other. And then other times it ends up being, like, well, I don't want to look weak, so I'm not going to be selling your stuff, and you're not going to be selling my stuff. And then it it just kind of gets lost in translation. But I'd go, you know, a lot of other people in the the mix here for Bolnikano. She's out of all the people that are obviously on this hall of fame list. She's the one that I would want to see in the ring against a lot of the most people. Um, all these options would be a match. I'd be down to see Becky Lynch. You another name. Say like Becky Lynch. Yeah. You know, I, I'd want to see the Charlotte flair match too. And there are, I'm sure tons of names on like the stardom side that I'm just not like, I don't really know anything about Julia for the most part. I know a little bit, but I couldn't, you know, tell you what her moves are and stuff, but maybe she would be a really good option. And, um, there's nobody in AEW right now that I think I would pair her with. I wouldn't pick Riho over any of them. I wouldn't pick Brick Baker over any of the ones we just mentioned. I think she'd have fun with Riho. I think Mercedes, you got to put her in any list. Of just can have good match. Uh, Chris Statlander might be fun. Willow Nightingale might be a fun little power match. Will McConnell is the one I'd like to still see in the ring. What's the last time she wrestled? Do you know offhand? It was in the 2010s. I didn't think it was like that long ago. No, it wasn't. I mean, she's only in her, um, I think she's only in her, fif- in her uh, mid-50s now, so. So she probably could go back and have another match if she wanted to. Do it. Somebody book it. Uh, technically, oh, it says she retired in 97. But she's had matches in, um, uh, I, I guess technically she hasn't had matches really. I'm just having a look at some of them. She's had like some kind of appearances as like managers and gotten interfered and like gotten interfered in some matches and been like commissioners of promotions and stuff like that. But, um, but yeah, it's she had like a um, I so said she. It says in January 8th, 2012, she produced her own professional wrestling event, which saw her recreate some of her most famous matches with some of her old opponents. And it ended with the official retirement ceremony, even though she'd been retired since she hadn't actually wrestled a match since 97. So. Bring her back out one more time. I think. I think well, she, she retired. She retired because she had a lot of injuries. So oh, I, I imagine, I imagine she, she can't. She, she, she wouldn't have retired in 97 if she didn't have to rest, didn't have to retire. 
out of all the options for like having another big monster against her, if we could have gotten her against Awesome Kong at some point, that probably would have been really good. Yeah, that's that's the go to, I think. And then we've got uh And by the way, obviously inducted by Alundra Blades. I would assume that she's gonna be inducted by her, yeah. That makes the most sense. Is she actually confirmed for anything for like uh doing like a VIP thing or no. like Alundra? Alundra? Yeah. No. I'm surprised. I would have thought that they would have booked her for something like that. But then again, I haven't been paying too much attention to that because I didn't get tickets, so <laughs> I'm regretting that now, though. Now that we finally got to this point, I'm like, I should have gotten tickets for Mania. Wait all these years for it to come to Philly, and they have to that, go. That's after always I the fucking... same bet if you're a wrestling fan. Like, but it wasn't WrestleMania 29, you know. <laughs> but it was like I waited all these years for them to come back to Philly, and they they popped up after I fucking moved away from it, and then you know. But it just, it would have been too expensive. It would have been like a couple thousand dollars or something. I'm like, I don't have that money. It's quite good for Vorda Conrad that um, it says, I'm just checking cage match and her final three kind of official matches rule against uh, Medusa or Linda Blaze in WCW. Um, and they all went five minutes or under. Hmm. Because WCW didn't know how to treat women. Nobody was knew WWF that at that time. Yeah. Again, so no, no, nobody in North America knew how to treat women's wrestling at that point. So. You know, to be honest, I never think of WCW even having a women's division. That's why. That's you know. That's why you're. We're looking at what we're looking at. Yeah, it's just weird. Like, because the you know, I, as I always say, I was more of a WWF guy than a WCW guy to begin with, but like. They never put any focus on there. Like I remember specifically being like, "Oh, the cruiserweight division. That's a really cool thing in WCW." But the women's division, I don't remember jack shit about that. So, yeah, I remember the belt being thrown in the trash can, but that's because it's an iconic yep. moment. So what I'm, happened? Real quick, I can do this in a couple of seconds. He threw the belt in the trash. They brought in a bunch of Japanese women's wrestlers to face her. And then I think she might have had a final match against either one of them. Actually, it had to be one of them because I don't think uh, Jacqueline was wrestling Debbie Sibby at the time. So it's like a six month program at most for her. Yeah, boo WCW. <laughs> had an opportunity to do something different with WWE and they ended up just not. Same as a whole hardcore thing. Like, I forget that they tried to do a hardcore championship and stuff. Now, the headliner of the Hall of Fame this year is Paul Heyman. We don't know who he's going to be inducted by yet. Our assumptions are that it could be a lot of different people. I'm still going that it probably would be CM Punk, but I could see a lot of names popping up doing that. Or to not even necessarily have somebody do that. He might not want somebody to talk about him. He might want to stay in character or something. He into he has somebody in mind. So I'm guessing it's Punk. If he didn't just come out and say it's my kids, I'm guessing it's being Punk. Yeah, I, I think I'd be fairly confident it would be CM Punk. Most likely, I mean, Punk's a great talker. He's somebody that hasn't, you know, he's not going to do anything else really for WrestleMania this week, except for. Yeah, you know, the commentary thing. So it's like, you know, it's not like he's going to be like, ah, oh, I got to prepare for my match, though, you know. <laughs> but I'm very curious to hear his speech. I think that he could do the full hour or whatever they plan on having this Hall of Fame last for and not have any script and probably have everybody hooked 100% on what he's going to say. Of course. He's one of the best talkers that they have, period. And, you know, I've all the different things that I've seen him do, like the inside the ropes and stuff, he's always so entertaining when it comes to that. So I have zero doubts that he is not going to just, like, you know, completely kill it. But, um, you know, we can't do the one more match thing with him, really, because Paul Heyman's not a wrestler. But <laughs> if, uh, if you have any variations of that, what do you think? Um, I... But let's talk about, like, if Roman Reigns isn't the end of his career, which it likely is, 
Who's one more guy that you'd like to see get the rub from being with Paul Heyman? My brain immediately goes to Braun Breaker. Heard his name a lot in that regard. I don't think he necessarily needs it, though. Well, none of these people need it, but we're doing the exercise. Oh, no, a lot of I mean, people like, WWE need someone to, tell, to, to cut promos for. Yeah, like, there, there are definitely people that no, could he use... Said, Paul he doesn't Heyman. think Heyman needs it. No, I meant Braun Breaker. Mean break it, mean it. Oh, no, I think Breaker might. I think uh, about a year ago, I would think more so that he would, but he's come into his own quite a bit more in this past year that I think he'd be fine enough on his own. If I'd be going with somebody that I think Heyman would really help, that like they really need it, then, hmm. Out of the current WWE roster, I mean, I'd I'd go more towards somebody that probably in NXT than somebody on the main roster at the very least. But like, I'd put somebody in there that I feel like they should get a proper return on their investment, and not somebody that I think could use him. But it would be kind of the Curtis Axel Cesaro Ryback thing. Because, like, yeah, Reg Holland could use uh, a Paul Heyman, but I just don't think that the ceiling's right there for Reg Holland. I hate to crap on the guy, but, like, I don't think he's going to end up being some world champion in the future. Karrion Cross already has Paul Ellering, so we don't need to give him Paul Heyman. He doesn't need two Pauls. Um, that's kind of tough. I don't know. I'll look through the rest of this list and see if I can come up with anybody, but there's nobody screaming out to me on the main roster, at least. If he was ever going to actually get in the ring again, it would have somebody really good would have to be on the other side. And they haven't built up enough managers. But you mentioned Paul Ellering, and I would like to see them verbally spar. I'd like to see WWE go back to heaven managers it would have been fun to see him do that match with pierce a couple years ago during the pandemic what heyman versus pierce yeah (laughs) yeah nobody on the main roster that i'm seeing would stand out to me as as a good option for him but uh i don't know i kind of feel like when it comes to a paul heyman guy and we talked about this a little bit with the uh, Hall of Lame that we did. They have to have like real chemistry behind the scenes. I think if you just put him with somebody and he's not feeling it, it probably shows. So I wouldn't be able to just be like, hey, pair him up with like Hank and Tank and do something with him if he's like, I don't give a shit about these guys or something. If he wouldn't have already been in a position that he's in right now where I don't want to see him have his career take off a Gable Stevenson maybe could have been a good option for that. Yeah. I want to see him do something completely different from Lesnar. Do you know what I mean? So like Eddie Thor, like I think, (laughs) I think that it's just people go straight to like the, Oh, let's just have him do the Brock Lesnar thing. Like I want to see him work with someone who's maybe a little better on the mic. Maybe there's a different dynamic there. The reason it was fun to see him with Punk and with Lesnar at the same time was because different dynamics. It's fun to see him with Roman, but now it's too much of the same dynamic because it's the only time you see him. We should have seen him play around more with the Usos. We should have seen him, you know, just play a bit a bit more versatility than just doing the, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul Heyman and I'm the counsel to your tribal chief. But I think I think there's always someone who could use Paul Heyman. Paul fucking Heyman. He's the man. I think Styles could have been a good fit for him, maybe at some point. Not now, obviously, there's no point. <laughs> but like uh you know, if he would have been joining the WWE roster earlier than when he did, maybe that could have worked. I could see that working. Now, I plan on watching the Hall of Fame live. Uh, I 
don't really have an investment in ROH Supercard of Honor. That's going to be running at the same time, and I just honestly don't care uh, about ROH at this point, especially with the card that's going on where there's only three matches that are confirmed, right? Or did they add another one last night? They've added two. They've added, they've added a lot of matches. I think they've added quite a few matches since, since on last night's show. So, What was added last night? Uh, uh, so there's going to be a Joshi, uh, well, Stardom uh, six-woman tag uh, between... Um, I think it's Micah, Mina Shirakawa, and May Sarah against uh, Saya Kamitami, Tam Nakano, and all oh, the other ones escaping me. Uh, oh, Zumi. Yeah, that's it. Uh, so, added that one. Got uh, Carl Fletcher is going to defend the ROH Television Championship against Lee Johnson. And they've already got the Billy Stars versus Queen Amanata match for the. Mm -hmm. women's television championship Athena versus Hikaru Shida for the women's world championship and Eddie Kingston versus Mark Briscoe for the world ring of honor world championship presumably they'll add a tag team title match to there at some point as well um I think that based on what we've seen on the tv leading up to this there's a few other matches that I could probably pinpoint as going to be on the show in some fashion what do you think those are um there's going to be probably uh, Serpentico and Angelico versus uh, Maria Canellis' boys, the um, uh, oh, Griff Garrison and Cole Carter. The baby boys. Been, as yeah, because they, yeah, they've been feuding for the last like couple of months on TV. So over uh, Serpentico's mask, so that'll be part of it. Uh, they'll do Dalton Castle versus uh, Johnny T Johnny TV on this one as well, because they've been feuding for quite a while. And this will be probably the reintroduction of the, the boys now as part of um, uh, Johnny TV stable instead. So that could be, that could, I mean, that could be interesting. Are uh, they turning on a uh, castle? They had, no. well, they, they, they lo uh, he lost him. He lost them in a match to Johnny TV a couple of, about a month ago. Mm. And they've been off TV ever since. So presumably they'll come, they'll have the rematch on this show and they'll come back as like pick part of a, uh, Johnny TV stable and maybe screw Dalton Castle out of the victory. So, potentially leading to that. Um, I imagine that there'll be a few other things that they'll throw on, like just, you know, that sound like good matches on paper. That there might be a, a, um, a six a six man tag match as well, because a six man tag titles match, because, I mean, um, you have the, uh, uh, the, uh, the gun club have the, have the belt, so Bullet Club Gold, should I say? Have the belt. Um, so. They'll probably face Action Andretti and Top Flight, if I had to guess. Yeah, that would be the, the safest bit out of, a, out of a trio's team that's being pushed so far. Um, and there might be some other um, an additional like women's uh, tag or uh, match between Diamante and Mercedes Martinez against some team they put together as well, because they've been they've been fairly featured heavily featured on TV in the last month or so. So that wouldn't surprise me. Oh, we'll talk a little bit more about that next week when we lump that will into we? our hot tags. Yeah. Well, we. I, mean, I, I, want, I want to. I want to. Talk, I want to talk about it. I, I, I mean, I'm, de I'm definitely watching that show and not the shitty Hall of Fame with just like just people talking and screaming. <laughs> just I think. I it. think we should talk about it now. I don't think they're going to add anything. They will. Think... There's only five matches announced. Ah, uh, yeah, that's true. Well, they might. If we're going by uh, what was it Final Battle, they added stuff. Yeah, that was like, like 19. Night of the show. <laughs> Yeah, they just uh, they were like, "Hey, we're gonna add a match in this split second right now." Daniel Garcia is coming out, that kind of thing. By the way, shout out to Wheeler Yuta, who's still not good to compete. Shame, man. He's been what? out of action for a while. It, uh, is what it, is his injury? I forget. They haven't really said, have they? Aren't they doing the eight man targets? Nope, he's replaced by Matt Seidel. Okay. That's a shame that he was injured then. But. Yeah. Really unfortunate. Um, I, I would hope that he would be able to return and defend the Pure Championship soon. And they haven't set up like a number one contenders thing or something to kind of fill the void? No. Hmm. Just going to like put that all on hold. That's a shame. Um. 
yeah we'll do a, a quick rundown of this uh on the hot tags next week for you know, pay-per-view prediction type things uh it'll be kind of like a last minute thing before those things uh actually air later on that night because we'll be doing the hot tags on friday and all but um we'll talk about that we'll talk about the uh what's the new japan uh show that's happening that we'll break down to dr genesis yeah dr genesis that's what it is um yeah that'll be part of the hot tags uh next week instead of doing dedicated separate videos for those pay-per-view predictions but um we are in the hot tags side of this podcast at least so let's talk about some of these other things that i honestly didn't even have in my uh board i was just like well i'm not seeing anything really too much to talk about but you guys brought a couple things to my attention. Uh, Vince McMahon selling a hundred million dollars in his TKO stock. He now owns only seven percent of stock, or seven percent of TKO, and I think that's just going to keep dwindling. Yeah, as, as far as I'm concerned, that's still seven percent too many. So, yeah, I'd rather him just be entirely out of it. But I think well, there's almost be no chance. Out of it and he's not getting, and he's not getting any money out of it. So yeah. that, that would be my <laughs> preferred thing. I just think that there's almost no scenario that he's not going to at least hold on to some percentage. You know? I think he might just be done, dude. I really think he's probably just going to cash out. And I, I don't think he cares. He well, if that was the case, sale. wouldn't he have just sold it all now? Well, that there's probably some it takes nagling. Time. Like you've got, you've yeah. got, you got to, who are you selling it to, essentially, with the... Like, not everyone has $100 million just throwing that they can throw around i don't know how stocks work i'll be perfectly honest <laughs> uh, we, we appreciate your honesty i have no fucking idea how stocks work i've never gotten uh like a rundown of that i've never been interested in stocks i've always thought it was a complete scam and you know even like friends of mine that are like oh you should invest in stuff i'm like you don't know what the fuck you're talking about either do you and it's like well uh, bonds and whatever and it's like shut up you know you gotta have a lot of money for somebody else to figure it out for you and there's a reason I'm sure, but yeah, I just, I want Vince just kind of out of the picture at this point entirely. Like I did really appreciate though on raw, the, uh, one of the biggest like talking points of Monday night raw, the promo with punk and Drew McIntyre. I loved that segment. I thought that that was so good. And I loved punk just being like, Oh yeah, who you're the chosen one. What paragon of virtue shows you? And you can see Drew McIntyre just being like, ah, <laughs> and you know that it had to be talked about. Like they had to just go, fuck it. Like I I'll play around and they're probably like, it's funny. It's like, yeah, let's go there. That's what people want from punk. That was the most CM Punk felt that was so CM Punk that there were people on wrestling Twitter who were suggesting that he was so back that he might be fighting somebody backstage as the show's going on because he just seemed <laughs> In rare form. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's uh, getting into a fight backstage just because he cut a gun from him. <laughs> I thought that was a great thing for McIntyre, too, though. I think he held his own very well in ways that, like, I'm not as... I mean, Drew McIntyre's not been, like, bad on Mike or anything, but, like, I think he kind of leveled up a little bit with that promo. I was a really big fan of that. That was one of the absolute best parts of that show for me. And I know that a lot of people, their go-to is to just be like, okay, well, the Cody thing at the end was the main thing for me. I honestly think that that wasn't as effective as the punk and a uh, McIntyre segment. I like that better. I, but, I think that the top segments on raw delivered the way they needed to. And as far as the Cody thing with, you know, the surprise appearance of the rock, which, by the way, was the best part of it, was that they did not advertise him, so it felt like, oh, shit, he's bothering to show up to just a random Raw. And then it was a very calculated move to make him beat up Cody. Cody bled. Uh, Brock was saying the fuck word left and right. and It was an effective segment, especially for people who I think are just perpetually stuck in Got to do stuff like that because that reminds me of when things were super popular and over. And that's my only gauge for is wrestling back. What do you guys think about the whole discourse of people being like, ooh, The Rock said fuck and like there's blood and 
you know, the continued, I guess, like uh, preferential treatment of the rock versus, oh, is this going to be how we can all do it going forward? Are we going to get more of a TV 14 thing? Cause I just assume nothing's changing about the actual product. It's just the rockets leeway. We're going to see this disappear right after mania. I remain hopeful that the rock is getting leeway and that this will kick the door open for more of it. Not every minute obscenely like it was for, you know, most of the nineties and two thousands or late nineties and two thousands. But yeah, I think blood's effective. I would like to see it more. I think not saying fuck and we're saying dipshit like CM Punk but I think swearing can be effective. Fuck yeah, I can. (laughs) You know, I think of note, WWE did not grayscale the footage of Cody bleeding on YouTube. So that is a change. It remains to be seen whether or not that'll play into more things moving forward, but Cody definitely bladed. You know, it wasn't like, well, he cut him open hard way, so happy accident. I would say that it's not an indicator of any substantial change coming. The Rock gets to do with that, what he does, because he's The Rock. And if you want to do that stuff as well, then become The Rock. And you'll be able to do it. Essentially, yeah, he's makes he's the most interesting and compelling part of this entire build to WrestleMania. And so, yeah, of course he gets to, to take liberties and do things that other people can't do, because, well, he both is one of the biggest stars in not just wrestling but in hollywood in general and then he's also a part owner or at least like a board member of the company so yeah he can do whatever he wants and get away with it um but i think that at least maybe with certain people i think like punk would be able to get away with this stuff or at least to a certain degree i think roman can get um get away with this sort of stuff i think cody's at the point that he can get away with certain stuff now and yeah, it'll just be those like exalted few, and the rest of them are just underneath it. But that's just the, that's just what happens when you've got stars and people that aren't stars. I think that the Rock and especially in the build towards like the main event stuff, it's established like there is a marked difference between the Rock and everyone else on that roster. And then there's still there's a, still a huge difference between people like Cody Roman and other people to anyone else on the roster. So, so yeah. Th- those people will just have to continue to go with the way that it's always been. I'd argue that there's an extra level too, where it's like uh, Kevin Owens, for instance, is higher up than most people, but he's still on a tier lower than like a Cody. And he gets a little bit more leeway when it comes to his promos, but I don't think that Owens is going to get the opportunity to be able to say you're a heel and talk about that quite the same. As I, as I, I didn't like watch raw from start to finish. I saw like the, the, the most um, important points or at least clips of them but it is quite funny to me how like everyone well, i say everyone but loads of people talk about how this is one of the greatest episodes to raw that there ever was and yeah all that other stuff and I, and I basically said like yeah i see this like once every, i see pretty much what i saw on this episode of raw i see every couple of weeks on an aw show and it's like it's just like oh. you get you get you give the sports entertainment fans a taste of real professional wrestling and they all and they all like, and they clean their themselves pants. Like, yeah, yeah, they, they, all jizz, they all jizz their pants simultaneously it's like oh my god it's like this is the greatest thing ever it's like like okay so you haven't ever watched any real wrestling before because let me let me give you the real experience of that because i also i have a friend who i'll just say the outlet's name he catches up strictly through wrestle talk and he's like how how is Ra? i said the good parts were really good. The bland parts were really bland. Mm-hmm. He goes, Russell Talk gave it a six out of five. I'm like, okay, sure. Like, I get it. Everybody, it's just funny because I, I always get accused of being super duper optimistic. And I always say, well, if, that's, if you think that of me, then you're just not listening to me. Because, yeah, everybody just gets a taste of the smallest crumb of what they want. And they're like, yes, we're back, baby. Like, this is the best thing ever. And it's like, look, it was really good. But I still think it was a fucking slog to sit through. Yes, three segments on the show were great. 
but it was like a 10 segment show right well like I, that's where i kind of go like i don't know why people go this is like one of the best things ever because in ring osprey shibata uh beats out anything that happened on this show of course and like i mean all the in-ring stuff that happened in yeah. AEW this week was better than anything that happened but, on raw when it comes to the in-ring stuff there's no debate whatsoever in my mind but, and that's but, you know par for the course in a lot of things i saw the number that came out it said that there was less than 30 minutes of wrestling on mm-hmm. the three hour episode of raw it's like i, I say I'm, I'm not saying that you should never have promo segments or promo segments can't take up a decent proportion of what happens on your um your show it's just that like you've got three hours or technically like two and a half just under two and a half if you go through the ad breaks and stuff like that but if you can't even devote half of that to wrestling to actual build to wrestling then kind of why why even call this like wrestling anymore and surely it should i know they call it sports entertainment anyway but it's a case of well there's not even any sports in it just call it quote-unquote entertainment or call it like a like it's just a play that's going on at that point really a three hour long play that's their dream i think they've been trying to get there since 84 well, i thought that was vince's dream why is that triple h's dream now as well because that's what he made money doing see i think that their approach both ways of course you know there's positives and negatives wwe and AEW that we talk about all the time but like i find myself skipping through all of these shows all the time Now, like, I didn't bother at all watching the TBS Championship number one contenders match or the uh, Orange Cassidy, Trent Beretta Kingdom uh, match. I didn't bother watching them. I was just like, I don't really care. Uh, Young Bucks and Private Party, I skipped through the entire thing. I just didn't want to watch it, you know? I found myself watching, of course, uh, Takeshita and Swerve and uh, Osprey and Shibata, but also working on other things at the same time. And then I can't say like, oh, because I'm more of a WWE guy that I was watching that. No, like I didn't fucking watch Andrade versus Giovanni Vinci. I didn't even stay in the same room for that. I was like, I don't really care. And like Bronson Reed versus uh, Sami Zayn. I like both of those guys, but I was like, this match doesn't matter. Gunther's just like, yeah, you can't win. You can't even beat Bronson Reed. And Sami Zayn's like, that's what he says. And then Gable's like, so what did you say? And then they do that. And then they talk about it again. And I'm like, all right. So we had like five segments dedicated to this thing about just, man, Gunther lost to Bronson Reed for no reason. And Bronson Reed's not even scheduled for the thing. Okay. Well, then I didn't need to watch any of that either. And I'm like, man, I really wish that I could take like, the great segments that we had on raw of like the promo stuff and then replace the matches with like the Shabbat Osprey match and whatever. And then like, then I can see having this be like, man, what a hell of a show, <laughs> but you got to mix and match raw SmackDown NXT and dynamite and collision for me to be like pick and choose. You know, I wasn't invested in Jey Uso versus Shinsuke Nakamura. I like them both, but I skipped it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that a lot of that comes down to the fact that you're not really a wrestling fan anymore. <laughs> yeah, we, we, that's a discussion that we'll eventually have. But yeah, yeah, I think more and more each week that particular aspect is showing through. The burnout is definitely a thing. And of course, it's going to be even uh, harsher if they end WrestleMania in a way that pisses me off. <laughs> Because no, I mean, I'm, part of this I'm is from fully... the way that Mania ended last year. Like, it's still uh, an effect on me of like I can't get super invested if you're going to drop the ball. And you know, I mean, uh, they got a chance to win me back for that. And yeah, it's not AEW's fault what WWE does, but there is a you know spillover one way or another because there's nothing that's happened in AEW over the past year that's made me go. Despite the WWE stuff, the AEW stuff is just like, wow, that's really speaking to me, too. It's like, eh, now they've got your issues in the same and other ways, too. Like, I want it all to be, uh, yeah, having some tweaks. But I really like that Punk and McIntyre segment. I did really like the uh, the Rock and Cody thing for parts of what that was. 
one thing I wanted to talk about when it comes to that, a lot of people jumping on this whole conspiracy theory of the trucks having Stone Cold and John Cena on them being like, nothing happens in the background for no reason. Look at how much Triple H has been doing with like all these, you know, this person's talking to this person behind the scenes. And then later on in the show, you get to see that they came out and interfered or something. I'll match that with this. The hell have they been doing with Nikki Cross? No, full stop. No, you can't. No, you can't do that. You can't compare that to this. That's a something that they've been doing for months in the background that has led they absolutely really, nowhere. They stopped doing it months ago. It's just that you don't you don't check it out. Nikki Cross doesn't even appear on TV anymore. Yeah, the so, whole point of that was Sanity was coming back. And then Eric Young said, actually, no, I refuse to work under Vince McMahon. They were going somewhere with that. And they dropped it because Nikki Cross probably was doing her PhD or whatever. She had other things to do. I'm sure she'd rather be on TV, but it's not like pressing matters. I'm going to say I fully hook line sinker. I think they, you've John Cena and Stone Cold Steve Austin's faces on a truck watching The Rock beat the shit out of Cody Rhodes. John Cena has said nothing, but yeah, I want to be at WrestleMania. Where's my phone call? Where's my phone call? But he's clearly not fighting solo. We're two weeks out. So I'm going to guess maybe we just get like Austin and Cena and whomever to even out the bloodline and the bloodline rules match combined with the iconic like glass shatters, rocks, eyes, bug out. And you get that nostalgia rush. I, I, I'm gonna. I think they're doing it. I think. I think we got something really special for Mania 40. I'll say I want that to happen. I want full on Avengers Endgame here. I want to see. You know, you got the bloodline out there. Then you have people like um, Stone Cold. John Cena, Randy Orton, for that matter, even though he's not really involved, but, you know, tangentially, he could be. Uh, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, all these people that have been screwed over with them in the past. I want maybe Drew McIntyre to get involved on the bloodline side of things. Like, he just kind of... Seth Rollins comes out to help, and then Drew McIntyre goes after him afterward or something like that. I don't know how you want to necessarily uh, bleed those storylines over, but I want to see the uh, on your left portals thing pop up and for it to be this big oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god and then cody rhodes wins but i just don't have as much faith that there's like that they're hinting at those two with that shot i think that that's just they're two of the biggest names so they're on the truck and it happened to be in the shot i don't think it's a conspiracy thing what about you Calum? you think that there's any truth to the whole uh background teasing red herring type stuff Oh, yeah, I think they're definitely going to be involved in the match. Yeah, good. <laughs> you know, it's like... Like WrestleVotes showed, they have plenty of WrestleMania trucks that they could have used, but they chose to use a WWE truck with Cena and Austin's faces on them. Like, could have used anything else. Well, people loved that segment enough that they thought the whole episode was just the most amazing thing in the world. Um, <laughs> and speak to something though. It's not how you start. It's how you finish. Uh, in a lot of ways. And if you give people something really big to talk about, then that's their focal point. And that kind of speaks to what we've said before, where um, Calm's made this point more than any of us. But if you end with the Cody Rhodes thing, people are going to like WrestleMania. If you end with it, not working out like that, then people are going to hate it. Like the, doesn't necessarily matter as much what all the other things are. Although I do think that that's the difference between making a show you end on a good note and then you start feeling a little bit worse about it every time versus, Oh my God, this is the best thing ever. Cause okay. Hey, when you get, you know, you order a meal, don't you want your, your side and your appetizer and your drink and all to all taste great. You should. Damn right. Yeah. Just going back to the, the punk and back into a segment. I think that overall it was good, but I have like two comments about it. One, um, 
stop digging up Jim Cornette's podcast. Just fuck off with all that. That's uh, that that noise can just get out of any sort of uh, discourse. Really, it's just that's that that pissed me off that he that he said like it was just an offhand comment where he's just like t- talking about Pat McAfee's podcast and then he just says, "Oh, I only listen to um what is, what are his two ones the experience and the experience and the drive through." And I was yeah. like, "Huh, that's uh, yeah." Just threw it in there, Mister. Mr. Pro trans rights and all the other stuff is also like an avid listener of Jim Cornette. Yeah, I, I believe that. And um, and and the other thing is that Seth Rollins is now not only the least important part of the Rock and uh, like the whole of Cody Rock tag team situation, but he's also the third most important person in his own world title match. Isn't that so? It's so funny because you can. That's really glass half empty or half full, depending on perspective, because you can either say exactly what Callum just said, or you could say the Seth Rollins fans are probably loving this being like, wow, he's involved with everything and everybody. It's really just one of those things depends on how they follow it up and how he comes out of WrestleMania looking. I am disappointed that punk is just going to be on commentary, even though that was one of the options that I had tossed out there in a, an article for EWN at one point. I was kind of hoping that he still would be able to do the uh, special guest referee thing. I like that he even called attention to it. Like, uh, Rollins tried to be like, yeah, but his arm's busted. And he just gets down on his knees and ca- counts to three like it's no problem. On the other arm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that's my counting arm. Um. A lot of other things that happen on here aren't even worth talking about. Like Andrade had his match against Giovanni Vinci. He was scheduled for Ivar. I don't know why they switched it, but whatever. Sure. Didn't matter anyway. Um, Dom, though, got fucking clocked. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a <laughs> big talking point for everybody. <laughs> Getting right think, chin by Becky Lynch. I think he needs to hit Becky. That's that right. <laughs> I know that's like I know that seems like a, a weird statement, but it's just a case of I, I mean I'm personally just sick of like the kind of one-sided nature of yeah. the intergender violence you get on WWE. It's even a I case of if you don't want to do it, if you don't, if you don't want to do it, don't do it at all. But if you are going to do it, it shouldn't be a case that women should just be allowed to hit the men, the men and nothing in kind of return. And look, I, I, I say I'm not saying that should happen regularly, but if you're showing like trying to make Dom one of the biggest heels of the company and Rhea a big heel as well, then yeah, he should he should clothesline Becky Lynch in the match or something. Like, it's nothing that's going to hurt Becky. Not, I, I would say punch hit her directly in the face like she did to him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying... <laughs> that's why I laughed, because I thought you were like, I think you should punch her back, like, you know, no. g- give her a receipt kind of thing. <laughs> just no, just no, fucking I potato that far, but, Becky Lynch. But, but, but yeah, but imagine the heat that he'd get if he'd like... Like Becky's on the floor at one point, and the referee's distracted, and he just decks her with a clothesline. Imagine how, the, the reaction that gets. Oh, uh, it would ah. be way more than if he would do what they would be more willing to do, which would be something like he trips her, because that's what they're only familiar with. Is like uh, he'll hold her leg down, and you know, or like oh, you know, he can get involved, but he can like put Rhea's uh, foot on the rope or something. Like they never want to go full blown. You know, he gives her a fucking vertical suplex or something. <laughs> I'll go a step further because specifically it's been an issue for Ripley for her entire run with the Judgment Day. Where, like, I remember a few months ago in the build-up to Payback, Raquel comes out and jumps her. All four guys are just standing there. And it's like, this is so stupid. Mm-hmm. If, you, if your girl or if your friend or if your wife or anything was getting attacked, you would pull the other woman off of her at least. If not just flat out, you know, get the fuck off my girl. Like it's so dumb. It's and it's so transparent too. It's always like, awkward as well when I mean it works with the same with uh Rhea in the past that they've done. Like she's obviously she's done more where she's like body slammed a dude or something, but it is funny when you see like three or four people go after the men and then judgment day and Rhea is like, Oh, I'm going to do my shocked face and then get out of the ring. <laughs> and you're like, you can kick this guy's ass. Why are you not doing anything? You know? Yeah. It's, it's annoying. It's like, like Callum said, if you're going to do it, it should go both ways. If you're not going to do it, don't do it at all. 
Yeah, that was the, another major talking point was Dom getting uh, blasted in the face in a way that most people uh, wouldn't be as big of a fan of. The phrasing on my part. Uh, <laughs> on the uh, on the Dynamite side of things, we just talked about like the match results um, that had happened. Uh, but obviously there's things outside of the matches too. They had their vignettes for promoting some you know, the Daniel, uh, the Brian Danielson feud coming up and, um, some more stuff with the young bucks, you know, <laughs> Alex Marvez is better than Renee now. Like I thought that was kind of funny. Um, uh, skate park, uh, project thing caught me by surprise a little bit. I don't know if there's That's cool. They're getting, talk about that. they're getting press, you know, they were going to get press with him climbing on Everest, but they didn't Darby letting Tony Hawk plant on his broken foot is just okay. Darby like, yeah, all right, but it's like, we get it. <laughs> You're reckless. I'll say I'm already not digging Chris Jericho and hook. I didn't like Jericho's part of that at all. He just said it was such a flat delivery of this whole thing. I mean, I think most people would be in agreement that Jericho's needed to go away for a while. Jericho now. is aura lizards right now. Like, in, he, like as a guy who has always been quite um, knowledgeable about when he needs to take a, a short break from screen, even if it's like for a few months or whatever, but the fact that he's just hanging around and doing a a real nostalgia act right now of the Lionheart stuff is just, it's, it's pretty embarrassing. It's weird, too, because they happened out of nowhere. Like, yes, I know there were always the issues with Jericho or whatever, but he was always really good at being like, okay, this story makes sense. It feels like the Don Cows family thing happened, derailed his other thing, the JAS, and he's just been floundering ever since. And this week, yeah, he really looked like, uh, like he looked like, that sounds mean to the other guy, but he looked like the way Matt Hardy constantly looks. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I think it's just, it's, I think it's just a case of like Jericho. It, it's it's a weird catch twenty two. Is that Jericho is one of the highest paid stars in AEW, so there is kind of the compulsion to use him to get to make sure you get a return on it. But then he's just not doing anything interesting, and he hasn't changed his character up in a while. And he probably just needs like you know six months off TV before coming back and could be doing something fresh again. But they're just keeping him around doing stuff. And now he's attached himself onto Hook, which is kind of fitting into the whole narrative that a lot of people have, which is becoming more and more true each week. Is that he just attached himself to the next young star that's getting over and drains all of their uh, momentum away like a vampire? Yeah, I don't think it's going to work with this one because I think Hook is so specifically that one note like it's one note but it's perfect and i think it's just gonna it's just gonna feel like jericho is doing an opening match angle while maybe hook can get something out of it but it's a big maybe and and it, and it appears to be coming off like tony said that jericho looks very disinterested in what he's doing as well i think yeah. he knows i think he knows what he's doing isn't particularly like earth shattering yeah like his so he's kind of going with the most is not yeah. excited he's just like yeah, I've been seeing you. You've been doing some good stuff, uh, a lot of good stuff, actually. And uh, I, I like the stuff you're doing. It's good. So can you keep doing the good stuff? Because it's good. And it's like, fuck me, dude. Can you do take two of this? Like, maybe take a shot of espresso before you do it or whatever. Well, like, well I think it's because, like, he's in a weird place that he's never been in AEW before. He's completely in limbo. Like, it... They could drop this next week and it wouldn't nobody would really be like, Oh, hey, whatever happened to that? They'd just be like, Okay, whatever, they moved on with Jericho. There's been too much of changes and jumps and you know, not all of it's booking, some of it's just like Omega was hurt. So that changed and I feel like he's just very much blah. What's well, the uh, the latest thing about Omega? You had said something in the... Uh... Oh, that the Observer had reported that he's likely to be getting surgery on his intestines to, as multiple doctors have suggested, you know, if you want to come back at 
the level you want to come back at, your best to remove the, you know, perforated parts of your body to best recover. And it just sucks. Like, I feel like, I say it all the time, but the one thing that I think all elite wrestling never got right was the elite. And again, not through just them, but it feels like so start and stop from everything that I think people thought it was going to be. It's just unfortunate. You had also uh, tossed out uh, the way that you phrased it and everything was like all the things Becky has been saying. Uh, we well, yeah, Becky, about Becky just, but um, yeah, Becky's know. done 50 interviews this week alone. Yeah, the book tour her thing. New, her new book. And, you know, she's Ronda Rousey made her comments. We talked about them last week. Or you guys probably did. I wasn't on. Um, Ronda Rousey made her comments and Becky kind of said, hey, yeah, I understand that that's her perspective. And, you know, she didn't come up wanting to do this like I did. And also, everybody got so starry-eyed over the first match she had that they just thought, okay, she's fine. When in reality, it was a heavily rehearsed match with Hunter and Steph and Kurt Angle. You couldn't have been more protected. And she needed to actually learn the craft. So, a lot of people are like, yeah, Becky says Ronda can't wrestle. It's like, <laughs> yes, she did say that, but I think what she said was absolutely fair and true. You know? I haven't been checking out the, uh, you know, onslaught of reports about things she says in her book, but a couple of them have uh, caught my attention, like her uh, response about the Vince McMahon thing and all, and um, yeah, if anybody is interested in reading that book and you want to let us know if it's a, it's a great read and worth it, let us know in the comments. I don't plan on necessarily reading it, but that's because I don't like reading. <laughs> it's not a matter of being anti-Becky. It's just uh, eh, reading sucks. <laughs> it's <laughs> she, she has also been making, comment, she has also been making comments about the fact that her um, contract is... Oh, yes. It's going to expire in a few months' time. She claims... So oh, you'd think I'd have brought that one up. I wrote that one. She claims that she's in the final two months of her contract. She claims nobody's said anything to her about resigning. But then immediately said, it's WWE or bust. I haven't had my last WrestleMania. Seems like that's a recurring thing, though, is that they are waiting until the last minute to start getting people with the contract stuff. I don't know if that's their ideas, like let's get them to panic and then they'll be able to sign better like a negotiating strategy but we still don't have any confirmation that i'm aware of of drew mcintyre re-signing either right well he's he's also said that his uh contract is still expiring and that he's not he's, he's he hasn't decided as of yet i mean by by most reports they're suggesting that they're both going to get locked up to new contracts soon it's just a matter of when it's also it's a case of They'll probably both get massive, massive increases in what they're currently earning. I mean, they got to lock yeah. something down before this weekend, you would think, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, if I was if I was Becky in that situation, I don't know whether I would have been so publicly open about saying, oh, yeah, I mean, I it's, think WWE, it's WWE or nothing because because well, essentially it's like, well, by by all accounts of what he's paying uh, Mercedes, did, like Tony Khan would pay a, a good amount to get Becky Lynch on. Uh, in in AEW, so I just wouldn't, I wouldn't make it so blatant. You need to play a bit more uh, cards close to your chest, I think, and just get and get the money that you, you you deserve. She deserves to get paid a huge amount of money for it. I think she was just, you know, fucking around. Honestly, like I think she's probably been offered something, or I think she just wanted to, you know, get people talking, and she has because she's not going anywhere. I would assume that she's not. And for that matter, I still think that Drew McIntyre is going to resign too. But I wouldn't trust necessarily putting belts on them at WrestleMania if they have like a few weeks left afterward, you know? I'd be like, hey, Drew, sign that paper or we're having Damian Priest cash. <laughs> you know? But like, 
Becky's also been super weird about it. Like, as part of building this match, she's openly said things like, I don't need a belt. You know? And she's I'm also firmly said, on the Rhea Ripley should win train. She's also said, uh, yeah, I want to open WrestleMania Saturday. Because I've never opened WrestleMania before. And I'm like, I know that they like to do that thing where they try and make it seem like opening the show is a big deal. But it kind of seems like Becky's like, yeah, I had my moment a few years ago. I want to do this match and then let my husband enjoy his weekend because he's the big star this weekend. And she also, well, compared to comparatively (laughs) to her. Yeah, he's a bigger. I'd still, I'd still, I'd still, I'd still, I'd, I'd still say he's not, but that's the way. You, well, you, you, I'll, even I'll she, even she, straight up was like, "Yeah, uh, if Rhea Ripley is a heel, she's the worst booked heel in history. I think she's the baby face here." No, yeah, like she's not comments like that. like that. She is making a few comments aimed at Rhea, some like, I guess, um semi-truth shoot stuff about her saying that Rhea's not doing a good job as a heel because realistically when Becky turned heel in the feud with Bianca she did everything in her power to make the crowd hate her and not did it and whereas Rhea just you know does a lot of stuff that gets the crowd excited and cheering her even though she is meant to be a heel at least outside of the match in Australia that she had and then the other thing that she talked about is how the Rhea doesn't wrestle very often and pushing the idea that Rhea's kind of a instigator for going back to a more diva era where you don't wrestle that much and you get more interest by showing off your body rather than what you do in the ring. And I think Beck, I think that Becky's obviously leveling it up to order to build up some more intensity into the feud. But I wouldn't be surprised if that's what she kind of thinks as well. Like, uh, uh, Rhea's mostly getting the attention because everybody loves her ass and, you know, that kind of thing. I yeah, like, like how much attention has been on the, the stink face. Blew up. Yeah, yeah, the internet blew up because of that, exactly, so. Which I, I also liked the, uh, footage of, um, the guy feeding the popcorn to Nijax. I thought that was funny. Yeah, somebody said, how show attendance is about to go through the roof? And I'm like, <laughs> honestly, probably, like. There was, a, there was a funny thing after that that clip went out with them. Um, they did a triple threat match after with Shayna Baszler, and Shayna Baszler went actively into the corner to it. actively wanting to get the thing face. And uh, and then <laughs> and then Rhea got took out by Nia, and then Nia and gave Shayna Nia. This, yeah, the thing face, and then Shayna looked excited about, well, looked like she was happy about it, but then she opened her eyes, and then it was Nia instead, and obviously you just do that spot. So That's good. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it was that, that did fun. But I'm not saying there's anything wrong with doing that, but I can understand. I don't say I understand, but I can see why that might be getting someone like Becky's dander up. Yeah, I would die if I was Becky personally, and it was like, you know, like it's our life's mission to change the. Yeah, I'd be a little upset. You know, I'd be a little upset if it's like people are, you know, the whole Maxine Dupree thing. Like, what's wrong with saying she couldn't wrestle? It was that long ago that we were saying that, and you guys were like, yeah, you know, like, that was the whole thing. But we'll see where that goes, you know? Mm. It'll be interesting to see how the women's division as a whole changes coming out of WrestleMania. I'll say I still am, uh, you know, we'll talk about our predictions next week, but... I'm still firmly on board with Bailey's beating EO and not holding that title super long. I think that we're going to see a reset fairly soon with uh, Bailey's not holding that belt until, you know, she's not walking out of SummerSlam with the championship at least, I think. Um, let's, be, let's be real. This wasn't the plan. I'm sure the plan was to somehow, some way, get, get to Bianca versus Charlotte for the women's championship. And Charlotte got hurt. But. This is arguably better because it's the one story that's been properly built. Very quick mention here. Most Wanted Treasures is coming back for anybody that's interested in that show. And uh, it's not going to have Top Doll as a host anymore. Gabriel Iglesias is going to be hosting that. I think WWE Rivals is coming back too. I haven't watched anything of that from like the first episode or so. But hey, if you're into that. It's already back. It's happening. And uh, the biography WWE Legends thing. Yeah, 
pay attention to A and E for those things if you're into it. Let's go over to let's talk about the uh, Jack Perry stuff. Okay. Go on. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the breakdown you guys said to me ahead of time because I had been you know not coming across really anything from Jack Perry to the new searches that I just did. Uh, most of it was basically like a lot of the same, well, we don't really know what's going on truly. And he had his whole contract thing, but he may or may not still be involved in AEW. And it's kind of just like a lot of the uh, repeat of the same limbo kind of uh, thing. But you guys found out some more stuff, right? Well, it's just the reports that have come out this week from uh, two different, well, both from the Wrestling Observer, but from two different angles. One is the first report came out saying that, uh, Jack Perry had continually uh, tried to get in contact with Tony Khan and apologize for what happened at All In and trying to deal with all of that stuff in order to like try and see if he can get back into the fold of things, but was continually not, um, Tony Khan not engaged with that. But then uh, Jack Perry responded to that um, with a secondary report, at least coming from seemingly from Jack Perry's camps side of things saying that he hadn't heard from tony khan for about two months following all in uh said that he, he never uh, apologized or said anything along those lines and would and i told uh, khan's lawyers that he would not initiate any first contact between them they eventually had a in-person meeting at full gear before to, in order to discuss plans of bringing him back later on but then as soon as uh, cm punk returned to uh survivor returned to wwe at survivor series any of those plans were scrapped uh, then he um, worked with Rocky Romero and Tony Khan to set up his current New Japan run. Apparently, he said that he asked for his AEW release, but that was uh, denied. So he's now currently just working in New Japan while they still keep a lot of this stuff up in the air. And he's not, and apparently, he's not um, clearing anything with Tony Khan what he's doing in New Japan, which includes the angle of him tearing up the AEW contract and calling himself the scapegoat moving for moving forward. So that's basically the position we're in. Is it's a lot of like Tony Khan said this and Jack Perry said that, and they both like are on different sides of how things have gone on. So I don't know um, which side to really believe, or if it is just somewhere in the middle. But but yeah, it just basically means that Jack Perry is going to be probably be hanging around New Japan for quite a while longer. Just let him go if you don't want to bring him back. If you have that strong of a problem with him, then fire him. I don't think. See, I don't think he wants to do that because realistically, there's no, there's no real good reason to fire Jack Perry. If he wants, to, I think he still sees value in him, and I think he still likes him. It's just he's not, doesn't feel in a good position to do it right now, especially because Punk is still kind of in his honeymoon period of being back in WWE. I think he's probably thinking, "I'll wait for that to blow over, and then I'll bring Jack Perry back as soon as it won't become so." The, the CM Punk stuff won't become as apparent, but you know, it, it will still, he's, he's kidding himself thinking that they, as soon as he does bring Jack Perry back, that there won't be a load of CM Punk related stuff associated with him. In fact, probably the longer that he leaves him in New Japan pro wrestling, the stronger those CM Punk stuff is going to become. So yeah, fans are going to chant CM Punk when they see him next, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, mean, so but the stuff where wrestlers are saying, you know, Clobber and Ty. Like, do we really need to? How does CM Punk live in all these dudes' head rent free? It's just weird. Like, it's weird. And I, I wouldn't. If everybody's so strong in their belief that, like, Punk's annoying and it's all annoying, then wouldn't you also want to stop? Like, is that just me? Like, wouldn't you also just want to stop calling attention to it? Yeah. If you uh, did the whole, oh, you're living rent free in their person's head, there's some truth to that. And I hate when people toss that term out when it ends up being like not at all. Like, you know, the way that people fucking act on Twitter, they're all a bunch of jackasses. But like when it comes to people that are legitimately just like, hey, let me toss out another nod at that. It's like, well, you are kind of just piggybacking off of that. And you're showing that you care in a way that's like, you know, you ever see like when people on Facebook or whatever post like, 
they retweet um well not on facebook they repost something that's like i don't need anybody's opinion about whatever i don't need your approval and it's like but aren't you posting that to get their approval like aren't, i don't care what anybody thinks about me you cared enough to post that didn't you <laughs> you know so it does kind of speak to them being like man fucking get over cm punk if that's the case and if you can't stand on your own two feet, then that's a problem. Like if Jack Perry can come back to AEW and they can't get out of the uh, CM Punk chance, then that's a problem with the writers in AEW and with Jack Perry. Figure it out. Just do it. Oh, we didn't talk about NXT. Oh, we'll come back around to that. Uh, do we need to talk about NXT? I don't know. Let me, check. First and <laughs> Let me talk about, uh, let's see. They switched up a couple things here and there. This, uh, Natalia fought a little advice. Nah, we'll get your NXT talk that. next week when we do stand and deliver. Uh, we set up a couple of those matches for the, the Obafemi thing and all. Yeah. The only thing really is the Rich Holland thing. Uh, he said he's taking an indefinite step away from in-ring action and got like cheered for it. <laughs> Just yeah. not the reaction I think that they were whatever. expecting. Who, like, is anyone crying over Ridge Holland? Sorry, Holland. Like, is anyone crying over Ridge Holland? No. I just don't know why people think that it's, like, real. Like, this is very clearly a storyline. And some people are just like, oh, man, it's a shame that his career ended this way. It's like, you really don't think he's going to be back? <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah, nothing else really happened on NXT. Screw it. Uh, Alex Coughlin from New Japan retiring? What's going on with that? All that much is going on, huh? <laughs> Alright, well, if you guys not, have nothing to say about it, then <laughs> we can be funny. It's one of the hot dogs you guys had suggested. But. I, I kind of I thought that... Uh... Callum would chime in, but he unfortunately had to retire due to neck injuries. And we'll find out more as more is known. Was that something that he just recently suffered, or was yeah, that something that's that been like, like, like in uh, the cage match of... with the that was Osprey's last NWW match? So sadly, you know, he had to retire. Hmm. That sucks. Uh, yeah, as I, I think he, he had his um, final match was that big, uh, the big cage match they had a couple of weeks ago with the Osprey stuff, and uh, yeah, it's shown because he was he was he was a a good hand. I wouldn't say like he was ever going to be like a top breakout star or anything along those lines, but he was a very solid wrestler. He was very very strong. He would like his big things would be able to do um, big power moves with a lot of the big wrestlers in New Japan. I think. The most impressive thing that I saw just going around when people were just like paying tribute to him on Twitter was that he did a, a gorilla press to Jeff Cobb at one point. Just like lifting him up just straight up in the air like a bench press. That was that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, that, but it's, it's a shame to um, lose someone at that point and have to retire because out of um, out of your control, really. So always sucks anybody's uh, forced to retire, even if they're you know well past veteran status or something but especially if they're relatively still young to the scene and all so uh, hopefully he bounces back in some kind of way um whether it's you know gets some surgery and wrestles again like we've seen plenty of people come back from retirement or if he just finds some other kind of avenue to do a different career let's uh round out our hot tags with some smackdown talk here for uh, mostly talking about what's going to be happening next uh episode the one that's going to be airing tonight because last week yeah we had some qualifying matches and stuff it led to the point that we're going to talk about now we had the um whole setup that uh ray mysterio and all which i i don't know exactly how they're planning on doing this but now that we've got dominic mysterio lumped in with there maybe they're going to merge the whole andrade thing with that i don't know um but we have for this episode, Street Profits are going up against A Town Down. New Catch Republic's going up against Legado del Fantasma. I am expecting A Town Down under and New Catch Republic to win those two matches. I don't think you guys would disagree, right? Yeah. 
Nope. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Uh, Rob's muted for some reason right now. Um, I'll just keep going then until you guys are ready. But uh, we also have Jade Cargill is now going to be on SmackDown. They've confirmed that she has moved over to there. I don't know why they waited so long. Um, now it just took just took seven months. It's weird that they had the negotiation thing with her and Braun Breaker to then announce that episode that Braun Breaker was there and then wait several more weeks just to go and also Jade. I mean, I would assume that that would be because they didn't really know what they were going to do. And then now they just said, screw it. Okay, now that we've figured out we want to do this, let's put her there. Or that they felt the need to have jade in the that segment and just to remind you that she was there and their whole plan was we've got nothing for her to do until the week before wrestlemania so let's wait to announce her for that but i am now expecting at this point that we are not getting a women's tag match uh for the titles at wrestlemania i think instead of bianca and jade or bianca and naomi and then like some other tag teams and stuff I think we're getting three on three. I'm expecting Dakota and the Kabuki Warriors against Jade, Naomi, and Bianca for just a sake of getting them on the card. And then, of course, the baby faces win. You know, you keep that streak going for Bianca. You give Jade Cargill maybe even the one uh, that gets the pin. And then you can kind of like take it from there. But maybe Bianca and Naomi end up having a tag match for the titles at Backlash or something. But. It's a little underwhelming to me, to be honest, to just be like, let's do a six woman tag. Well, I don't think they all do the six woman tag. I think they're doing the tag title match still. Do you expect it to be Bianca and Naomi or Bianca and Jade? Bianca and Naomi. Oh, they've been building. Do you think they're going to have anything in particular for uh, for Jade to do at Mania? She could just gotta, nope. like, accompany them or just not be there at all. She'll be on like a, a kickoff panel, probably. Hmm. Rob's tossing out Jade in the corner in the chat. I'm going six woman tag, uh, but I guess we'll find out a little bit tonight because they are running out of time. They have to set up these remaining matches for WrestleMania. If we end up having something with, you know, we got to do something with a lot of these people. Nothing with Bianca, the one of the main people that they use to advertise WrestleMania this year. Um. I don't think we're really getting anything crazy when it comes to like Owens and Orton against pretty deadly or whatever. They're just going to fill some time. And is the rock scheduled for this episode. I don't think that they've necessarily said anything about that, or maybe they did. And I just lost track of it, but I can't remember if the rocks, the, yeah, the rocks not on this one. I think he's on the next episode of raw. Yeah. He's I'm pretty sure that that was what it was that he was like skipping that this week of SmackDown and he'll probably be there next week, but I mean, at this point, I don't think you really have anything that you need to do as far as the bloodline stuff, but you know that they're going to do some kind of a segment. So um, I think I'm going to be skipping a good portion of this episode of SmackDown, to be perfectly honest. I don't think it's going to be one of the big game changing things other than afterward. Maybe we do have some confirmation of some a couple other matches. You know, we, we are going to get the final two members of the six pack ladder match. So we know that that's going to be finished by this episode. But um, yeah, I mean. We're in a time frame right now where they need to get the ball rolling, but they're still waiting a little bit. I'm a little bit meh about that, but maybe they changed my mind. Anything you're uh, thinking that we should touch on on the hot tag so we didn't? Um, I mean, outside of potentially like talking about some of the stuff that happened at AEW rather than saying, oh, I didn't watch any of the stuff that happened on AEW properly. Well, didn't we already run down most of that stuff? No, you just said, oh, the the, the tag title match, the match to the Young Bucks pro party. Didn't watch that. Or just could pull way through that. Rob, actually. Yeah. Say, it's, oh, it's, fu- it's fine. We'd have to talk about it. Oh, like we had the number one contenders thing. Yeah. Uh, we, yeah. We had Swerve's going to fight Samoa Joe now. The TBS title match, which is skip through, where Nightingale won that. So she's going to be facing Julia Hart at uh, Dynasty as well for the TBS title. So we still, so we have no real idea if, or if Mercedes is going to be wrestling in dynasty or who her opponent will be. Yeah, she um, can come out and talk again though. And have the CEO chance. <laughs> yeah. We need to, yeah. I'm, I'm getting a little bit uh, bored of what she's done so far. She needs to start wrestling. Cause that's kind of what she's known for and celebrated for. 
she can't she she isn't a great promo so they can't just keep having a talk um yeah that i mean and to take that as both the young bucks and the best friends advanced in the tag title tournament so presumably i think they're they're fa- they're on the side that we facing each other next so presumably the young bucks win that one but um yeah and the osprey osprey match with Shabbat was good so presumably then we've thought well they're still going to be forward with the uh match dynasty but yeah osprey's fast becoming like the the main player for AEW, I think, pretty soon. But obviously, Swerve will be champion at some point, probably off Dynasty. So we'll see. We'll see. Do you think he's winning the battle of Dynasty? I'd say so. Now, I think that that's probably likely. The only way that wouldn't happen is that if Paige comes back and costs him the match. That's but, kind of what I'm thinking. But I, I don't think they'll. I don't think they do that. It depends on if it's the main event. I think if it's the main event, they wouldn't do that because that feels like. A very non AEW way to do a main event, having someone come in and screw the baby face. They don't really do that kind of BS finish for a like your world title match at, at the main event of the show. Not very excited about Dustin Rhodes against the Butcher. <laughs> That's how I think going for. <laughs> but well, I, 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 I mean, yeah, Rampage is just Rampage, you know. Yeah. <laughs> This felt like a weird holdover from 2020. Like, it felt very strange to me. What, the but, Butcher and Rhodes? Thing? Yeah. Like, it just felt like, okay, why? Like, yeah, I can kick your ass. Up. Hey, he's the Butcher. Yeah, he doesn't really want much. <laughs> so. And, uh, yeah, I mean, um, that's your week in wrestling, as far as we're concerned. Uh, we've got a hell of a week coming up with... A, just pure chaos of WrestleMania with uh, both nights of that. We've got the Slammy Awards. We've got the NXT Stand and Deliver, RH Supercard of Honor, Sakura Genesis. There's obviously episodes of TV that we're going to talk about. God knows what else that's going to happen in the world of pro wrestling in the next few days, but we will talk about that on the hot tags too. But you're going to get lots of predictions, uh, episodes i don't know exactly when we're recording going to record some of these probably i'm assuming we're going to do one on tuesday and one on wednesday we might do wednesday thursday i don't know but we'll we'll have the hot tags on friday i don't plan on necessarily uh, as well doing anything for the hall of fame but i could if anybody's interested in doing something for that i don't think anybody's going to be super duper into the idea of a watch along but we might do something on discord or whatever so if you have any suggestions of what you would like us to do feel free to toss them out there i might not be able to have the time but at least if i know that people have interest in certain things then that'll help quite a bit and you know the discord is something that you uh can chime in your thoughts there you can go on the facebook group at facebook.com slash group slash the mega maniacs you can go on the page on smartcatmoment.com for anything in particular i'm going to get those email alerts anytime you leave a comment even though my emails are not set up correctly right now with disgust because it keeps going straight to spam i don't know why but yeah i'll see them and then uh you know keep in mind that there is that uh funko pop contest Join in any of the ways that you want to on that. Vote on the Smart Madness tournament until we get the next round on uh, Monday. I'll be switching that over. Pay attention to all the articles that I'm going to be posting. I'm going to be posting a lot on EWN over the next few days for things like the In Case You Missed It recap of all the things that are heading into WrestleMania. I'm going to have the usual viewer's guide that I do. I'm probably going to fantasy book a version of the andre the giant memorial battle royal whether or not they announce that tonight because to me it seems like they should do it but they just haven't said a damn thing about it so unless they say it tonight they'll announce it tonight they either say it tonight or it's not happening it's one where yeah that's that's uh, (laughs) like they're not going to just be like okay it's tuesday afternoon and they're going to announce it for smackdown you know what i mean well they could always do that too because it doesn't really it's not gonna have it's kind of inconsequential isn't it in a lot of ways but at the same time i would think that they would at least want to put it out there on smackdown to be like next week watch this because if they advertise things like hey it's gonna be bianca against dakota i would think that they should at least put out the thing for next week for the andre 
Right. I'm hoping that they do because there are a lot of people that could benefit from it if you fucking book them afterward. <laughs> you know, give that the Brown Break or give that the Solo. Do something like that. But in any case, if you follow the Link Tree stuff, you find it at amagotree.com. Fanboys Anonymous related stuff, which of course you don't know what Fanboys Anonymous is by now. Fanboysanonymous.com. Check out everything on that website and uh, Smart Kid Moment stuff, Letterboxd, and anything else you find at Tony Mango. Like, follow, share, favorite, subscribe to all that. It's greatly, greatly appreciated. But also, if you're following my stuff, follow where I'll been, Callum's stuff. Yep, follow me everywhere at Duke Police. Check out all my work on fightful.com and uh, Check out whatever else I have going on, but to keep up with that, like I said, it's media, huge release everywhere on every platform. But you should also be following Callum. Yep, you can find me on Twitter at Wigmeister14. You can check out the power rankings every single week over on smartcomo.com, where I rank the WWE superstars based on their previous week's performances. And then you can also check out the Fantasy League, as we're coming very, very close to the end now. Only I guess one real week worth of points left to gather as we go into WrestleMania where the points are doubled and we will determine who is the winner of this year's season. Now we uh, do have some potential like uh, switch ups that we can do over these next few days, but I haven't really thought that much about any of it. And then uh, I'm just still waiting, next, the, I was still waiting for the full card to be announced before I change anything. You're the one that picks next, right? Oh, we you you can basically at this point you can decide whenever you just tell me you want to change someone. Just I'll do it. Essentially, it's basically first come first serve at this point. Hmm. I don't even know if there's anybody that I would pick uh, outside of that, but um, I just think-, think I should have won, and I think it's bullshit that I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> under under what grounds should you have won? Robbed of points. That's the grounds you piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I think, um, actually, you know what is, uh, let me double check this real fast. See if I can see if that one person's available that I am thinking might be, um, so my group, I mean, I got people on there that I'm not a big fan of being on there, but at the same time, they might do something pretty decent. I kind of feel like I should get rid of Ilya Dragunov because I don't anticipate he's retaining that championship. And we lose points for losing the belts, right? No. Oh, we don't? No, you lose points here and there, so I forget which ones are carrying over. Um, no, you don't lose any points for that. Anybody have Austin Theory? I think it's quite funny that you think that like, Austin Theory is more likely to win the tag titles and Ilya Dragon is more likely to retain the title against G- uh, Tony D'Angelo. At this point, no, not. Like, I mean, I, I mean, if, you, I mean, if, if you're going to do that, then I'm taking Ilya Dragon off. So, if that's, so that's if, that, if you want to do that. Well, I'm more so thinking about dropping Liv Morgan because they're just not like booking that. her for like anything at all. So. I'm kind of bouncing around between dropping Liv Morgan for Austin Theory or uh, I mean out of this list like there are certain people that I do expect to win a match over the course of this uh, week but like do I really want to give much to I mean it's the last week so it's like really it doesn't matter and, and some people um but like Ray Mysterio, I don't know if I really want to put Ray in that spot, or if it'd be smarter to put Austin Theory in there. Mm. I reckon Lee's not doing anything really. What can I do to win? Is the question we all have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go back to the back and drop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I will drop Liv Morgan, and I think I am going to replace her with it's tempting to to replace her with Josh Briggs but I think I'm going to replace her with Austin Theory yeah okay then. I'm still going to wait till the full cars come out before I do no trades or anything on your end Rob no, I lost. It doesn't matter. 
<laughs> Alrighty. Well, everybody, if you want to stay tuned for the fantasy league stuff, you know where to find it. You can find everything on smartcalmoma.com and hopefully we will see you all throughout this next week. Get those email alerts set up. Join us for those post shows. Tune in to all the episodes that are coming your way from Smack Talk and adios for now. This has been another Smart Out Moment and we're being counted out.